This is the Cliff Yates Show. Personal growth, motivation, inspiration, and philosophies for a great life. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cliff Yates Show. This is the podcast, and we are now at the new, well, it's new to me right now, our northern studios here on our private island in upstate New York, Elm Tree Island, and we are on the St. Lawrence River. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I'm going to show some pictures right now of some drone footage of our island from up above so you can see exactly where we are in the St. Lawrence River. We are on the New York side. And just across the way is the Canadian side. As the St. Lawrence River runs down from Lake Ontario, all this water comes from the Great Lakes, goes into uh, Lake Ontario, then into the St. Lawrence River, which runs a few hundred more miles north past Montreal into the Atlantic Ocean. So now here we are. And if you're on YouTube, you'll see the pictures and you can know exactly where I am in relation to where maybe you are. So we made the transition driving up from Florida and it was quite a trip, uh, a couple days, 10 hours one day and 12 hours the next day, 22 hours on the road, but we made it and I am doing a solo podcast today. We have a, uh, man, I have some great guests coming on next week. So Mike Marino is returning. We have Roger Rod and a couple more people are going to come on the podcast next week. But today, I could not miss today. I, I have habituated, as I try to do, uh, you know, when people say I have uh, a bad habit of doing this, well, we can always change that and say I have a good habit of doing this. So I have habituated doing the weekly podcast, at least producing the show and putting it out on a weekly base, basis for the past 67 weeks. And so I have not missed a Thursday podcast being put out there. And so if you're uh, listening and or watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment that tells the computer that you're interacting with the show and they'll show it to more people. And we are gaining, gaining a great army of positive people impacting others. So I'm glad you're here. And if you're listening on one of the podcast platforms, subscribe to the show. But this, for the next three and a half, maybe four months, this is going to be the look of the show and the back here is the original outside of the cottage, the stonework here, which was put in place in the late 40s, piece by piece. And then we had an addition put on here on this side in 2000. And so now that's the studio with the backdrop. The stone is the original outside of the cottage. And then this was a window right here. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm pointing to a now a doorway that we had to make into a doorway from a window. And that was quite a job chiseling out the current uh, stonework. It, it was a tough job, but we got it done. And now we can walk through from this area, which serves as the dining area. And now also as the podcast studio for the next three and a half, four months, this is what you're going to see. And it's kind of funny. At least it was funny to me. I, I did a, a Zoom meeting with some primal health coaches and we were talking to each other. And now in the background, I have, this is the nautical American flag that you, you fly on the back of your, of your boat. And then I have a, a regular American flag that we, we had up there from a 4th of July celebration. So we, I had the American flags here, the nautical that I'm pointing to if you're watching on YouTube and then the regular American flag uh, from one of our 4th of July celebrations and uh, just made a nice backdrop. And now I've added a gun here because why not? Because during the meeting, one of the persons said, oh, I see a lot of American flags there. Well, I mean, there's two. And uh, are you a veteran? Because there's a lot of, oh, and also the background of my, the background picture, the background, the background picture on my ecam. Here is an American flag. So I got the background, the the nautical flag, and then the regular American flag. And so the person I was talking to on the Zoom call said, wow, there's a lot of American flags showing here. People must get triggered by that. And I thought that was kind of funny. Did people really get triggered by seeing the American flag? I actually had to look up triggered. What does it mean when people get triggered? They have an emotional event, usually in a negative way, to something they see or hear based on an experience they've had. And so... 
if the American flag triggers you, you're not in the right place because we are going to proudly be displaying the American flag, maybe even bigger. That's why I even stepped it up a I even stepped it up a notch and put my gun here. I had to order a special holder here just to have a weapon in here for our Second Amendment that will be also displaying. So now we're really going to be triggering people, I guess. So that's the, that's the backdrop for the uh, season coming up for the podcast. If you are going to be watching the video portion, this is what is being displayed here. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, go over to the YouTube channel, subscribe, and uh, check out the video portions of the podcast, specifically this one, so you can see where I'm located uh, with the pictures, and you can see the see the backdrop of the show and the way it's going to go forward. And we have a lot of great guests coming up this summer, but uh, we are here on the island in upstate New York. we got the new studio. And I think uh, what I wanted to do, I, I didn't know what I was, I have habituated doing this on a regular basis, but I almost put it off today because it wasn't convenient, and I didn't have a guest, and I hadn't researched anything specifically for this episode as we were in the middle of a rainstorm all day today so it's overcast rainy as opposed to yesterday when it was 87 degrees and bright sunshine so we have a little bit of a mood change here temperature change here at the island and i almost put off doing the podcast but i said i've habituated this for 60 plus weeks i've got to continue on and as promised, that I would put out a weekly podcast. And in the past year, I've put out many times more. And so I wasn't going to miss today. And so now I'm going to title this podcast and go into a little bit, what is conservatism? Because we were watching a program, my wife and I, and my mother, who is here, I'm going to film her because she's 88 years old. She's here working out. She did two miles on the treadmill today. You've, if you've seen her before, you've seen that she does planks and she's in excellent condition she works out almost every day. She didn't want to come on the podcast today, so we didn't force her. But we were talking about politics, and we were talking about conservatism. What is a conservative? What does that mean? Because I had to actually research that, too. Because years ago, I wondered, am I a conservative? Because, you know, years ago, we didn't even talk about politics or what we were or what you were or what I was, and nobody cared. So I did have to look at what it was and Republicans are conservatives because they want to hold to traditional values conserve conservatives they want to conserve traditional values of our country and conservatives believe in a limited government right smaller government not bigger government they believe in free market capitalism your right to create your own businesses to create your own wealth to make your own money to make your own way in the country and the world without government assistance and be that is part of the values that conservatives share they believe in long law and order strong borders and they believe in our god-given rights that are given to us by god above and not from the government and so on the other side you have the Democrats who believe in larger government, creating more government agencies and bureaucrats and to give people government assistance so that they are always relying on the government for their subsistence. And that's kind of basically how the two philosophies or mindsets work. And so long ago, I discovered, well, I am really a conservative. I, I should have known that ha having been a police officer for over 30 plus years, what a conservative was. I even looked it up and now, this is a definition that I, that I looked up online. I show it on the screen here. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it. Conservative values are beliefs and principles that aim to preserve the traditional moral and preserve the traditional moral order and limit the role of government. Conservatives generally believe in personal responsibility, individual liberty, free markets, and a strong national defense and I've read before that it's been described as you know peace through strength we want peace you, you, you get more peace by showing strength many times weakness as we have in the government today is going to it promotes uh, violence and aggression from other people other countries so we want peace through strength 
It's part of what the conservatives believe. They also uphold the principles of transcendent order, social continuity, prescription, prudence, variety, and imperfection. These principles guide conservatives in their political and social decisions. Okay, that makes sense. So that's what conservatism is. I am one of those for sure. And people I hang around and talk with usually are conservatives. But we, my family, my wife and I, we're, of course, we're open to, to discourse and discussion with everybody. We are open to that. Many times people on the other side are not, which is kind of disappointing because through debate, through discussion, we either learn from each other or other people learn from hearing and or seeing us. And that's one of the great things about doing these podcasts is I've been talking to people from all over the world with, from different countries, uh, and you get different perspectives and different views on what's happening in the world, what's happening in our country, what's happening in their countries. And through that discussion and discourse, I learn, they learn, and people who are listening from outside learn and that's why we need to be sharing these ideas and discussions that we have with each other. And we've had to turn now to individual producers and podcasters to get really to the truth. We have to hold things up to the light. I think that's in a biblical, it's a, a section of the Bible that says, hold everything up to the light, test everything. We have to test everything for truth. And we've found out now through the uh, lying media who we have found out have been lying to us for many, many decades. And so now it's uh, it's such a great thing because now we're holding things up to the light. We are not uh, just believing everything that we hear on, you know, the uh, mainstream media. We are turning to individual sources. And I think that's making us more, more aware of what is not true and what is true. And that's going to be the power of this pla these platforms, specifically the podcast platforms, which will, will probably, will probably, probably be under attack because we can't be controlled in a sense because there's too many platforms out there now that you can take your message to that people are turning to to get their information. So that's going to be taking power away from the government and trying to limiting our free speech and we'll see how that goes in the next few months to a few years as to how the government controllers try to react to what's happening because we're getting our message out there. People are now able to share uh, thoughts, ideas with the world, and that gives us power in our mission too, specifically here to have positively impact other people. And so that's how we're going to be conducting ourselves going forward as I know you are so so make sure you subscribe to the show I did a short video here a few days ago about the two New Yorks we have two New Yorks going on which I didn't even know there was two New Yorks but now I'm actually glad there are two New Yorks now when I was growing up and I never even went to New York City until I applied to the New York City Police Department and so I being from upstate New York for 100 plus miles from New York City, Rochester, New York, but talking to people, where are you from? Well, I'm from New York. Oh, whereabouts? Rochester, New York. Oh, upstate. We, you know, and I would talk to people from New York City and they would say, well, we don't, we don't consider you New Yorkers. We don't accept you as being from New York. And that, I just found that fascinating. No, I can't even say I'm from New York. We're not accepted by New York City uh, being from upstate and now we see with the trial with Trump and what's happened in Manhattan and New York City and uh, proper, now I'm actually uh, proud that we are not accepted or considered New Yorkers when we're from upstate. Specifically, when you look at our representative, our Congresswoman, Elise Stefanik, who is now on the short list to possibly be the vice president. Uh, and she is someone of staunch conservative values, and she represents this area where I'm at right now on the island. So that's why I did a video for two New Yorks, because in the in the mainstream media, they were saying, well, people were saying, don't go to New York. Don't spend your money in New York. Look what New York has done. Listen, upstate New York is totally different. Most of it is conservative. It is not like New York City. And so there are two New Yorks. And you can tell that by the politics 
in general. If you follow the state politics, you will see a definitive line between New York City philosophies and politics and upstate New York philosophies and politics. So big difference uh, from the people, and I experience it when I'm up here with the people of upstate New York. More, I would say, red, not blue as of New York City. And that's why Elise Stefanik would be a great pick for vice president because I think she would bring a lot of red voters to Trump and that would uh, would be a positive impact. And she would probably be set up to carry on the MAGA movement uh, after President Trump's term is up and she could carry us on for the next eight years. She would be a good pick. She is a staunch conservative and a woman. And so I think that would be great. Brought up before growing up, we never talked about these things. We never talked about what who you're voting for and who am I voting for and what political party you supported and are you a Republican or a conservative? Are you a Trumpster? Are you this? Are you that? No one even asked any questions. You went into the voting booth and you pulled back the curtain because it was private time. It was your choice to make your decision. No one else had a right to see and know who you were voting for and all that came to a head really, I think, probably during the 2016 uh, election, all the turmoil and the split in the country uh, from, from what happened when President Trump was elected. And, you know, none of us, a lot of us were not involved in pol- politics and we didn't care. And you didn't have to care. You didn't have to make it your concern. It was really COVID and what the government did during COVID that made you have to be aware. You actually had to be aware. You actually had to check in to see today, am I allowed to go outside today? Am I allowed to go to the store today? Am I allowed to go to church today? Is it shut down? Is the school shut down? Are my kids able to go to school yet? Are they still locked out? And so we were forced into paying attention with what the government was doing. So we were forced to pay attention to politics, which in the end is going to be a great thing because as a country, we're going to be more aware of what's going to go going on because now we're seeing we have to pay attention No longer can we sit back and let somebody else take on the fight for the country. Conservatism, 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 hard to say. And uh, the things that we believe in, that we see them eroding, we have to stand up and support the people that are going to be fighting for us. And so in, in the end, as in personal growth and betterment of ourselves, Through every adversity, as I always say, there's a greater and equal opportunity. So through the adversity of COVID and people seeing what was going on with what they were teaching the children, we were enlightened to many different things. And so we became not woke, but awake to what what was happening. So it's going to turn out to be a great thing that we're going to grow knowledge-wise into what's happening. And we are going to play as individuals more of an active role in our society and what we can do as a country, as a citizen, and what we really have to do. So stay tuned, join the fight, and we are going to uh, be going in all sorts of different directions this summer on the podcast, and I know you're going to enjoy it. And if I haven't told you already in this episode, I appreciate you. You know I love you. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll leave it at that for this episode. We're set up for this new season here on the island. And I'll be talking to you from the Thousand Islands, New York. If you're listening on a podcast platform, go over to the YouTube channel, check it out. See where we're filming. I'll see you at the next episode.